Imagine a giant factory line that makes the brains for your phone, car, and computer, and suddenly the conveyor belt just stops. No warning, no smoke, just silence. That's basically what happened when Beijing announced a new rule. Starting December 1st, any lithography-related goods that contain 0.1% or more China-origin rare earth materials need a Chinese export license. No exceptions. Why does that one tiny number matter? Because lithography machines are the single most important tools for making the most advanced chips. They use ultra-precise lenses, powerful tiny magnets, and exotic materials that only a handful of suppliers on Earth can produce at the required quality. A 0.1% threshold sounds tiny, but for high-tech gear, tiny changes break tolerances, stop production, and choke entire supply chains. This isn't a normal trade quarrel. It's a surgical move aimed at the Dutch lithography industry the sector that gives the world its most advanced chip-making equipment. And it didn't come out of nowhere. Behind the scenes, a court-ordered takeover in the Netherlands, international sanctions, and a string of political moves set the stage. Now, factories in Europe and beyond are already feeling the tremors. Car plants slowing, deliveries delayed, and millions of euros of output evaporating in days. In this video, we'll walk through exactly what China did, why Dutch companies like ASML are suddenly vulnerable, how one corporate takeover turned into a global supply shock, and what could happen next. From short-term outages to long-term rewiring of the high-tech world. Stick with me. By the end, you'll understand how a tiny material and a legal technicality can ripple through the devices we use every day. On December 1, 2025, China escalated the counter-strike with a direct hit on the Dutch semiconductor industry, targeting the most critical choke-point lithography machines. This policy, you know, includes two key clauses with enormous impact. Clause 1, the 0.1% red line, any lithography machine or related equipment that contains 0.1% or more China origin rare earths now requires an export license and must report end user details. This closes loopholes like third party shipping or transshipment, so basically, no machine can bypass China's control. Clause 2 Case by case review. Any exports involving 14 nanometer or more advanced logic chips, memory equipment for 256 layers and above, and their key materials must undergo individual approval. In practice, this gives Chinese authorities the ability to slow, restrict, or deny the most valuable equipment shipments to the Netherlands or any third country. Why is this so crippling for Dutch companies like ASML? Their lithography machines rely heavily on ultra-high purity rare earth materials from China. Lenses use cerium-based compounds for nanometer precision. Motors require over 10 kilograms of rare earth permanent magnets per machine. Magnetic levitation systems need heavy rare earths like dysprosium and terbium. Even if ASML tried to replace these materials, production costs could rise by 40%, and machine performance could drop by 30%, making advanced chip production impossible. To make matters worse, ASML's current rare earth inventory could support only 6 to 8 weeks of production, meaning any delay in export approvals would sharply reduce output. Analysts estimate monthly losses of 15 to 20 machines and 3 billion euros or more in annual revenue. In short, while the Netherlands tried to limit China's influence legally, China struck where it truly matters, the materials that make advanced chips possible. The result, a precise, high-impact leverage point that could ripple through the global semiconductor industry. Once China's rare earth controls hit lithography machines, the ripple effect was immediate. Fewer machines meant fewer wafers produced at foundries, which led to longer lead times for advanced chips. Those chips power everything from cars to smartphones to industrial controllers, so, well, delays quickly spread downstream. In Europe, the consequences were dramatic. 
Volkswagen's Wolfsburg plant and BMW's Munich plant already faced production slowdowns, with high-end models delayed by months. Across the continent, over 12,000 workers experienced temporary layoffs or reduced hours. Automotive output dropped by billions of euros in just a couple of weeks. Even North and South American automakers weren't immune. Honda cut production at plants in Ontario, Canada, and the United States, having capacity in some cases. Switching suppliers wasn't a quick fix. Nexperia's China facilities supply over 110 billion automotive-grade power chips annually, and about a third of automotive supply chain companies rely on Nexperia exclusively. Certification for new suppliers takes months, sometimes longer, making it practically impossible to replace Nexperia on short notice. This cascade shows a simple truth. In the modern high-tech world, a single choke point can paralyze entire industries. The rare earth controls didn't just affect ASML or Nexperia. They threatened Europe's automotive backbone, global industrial supply chains, and even consumer electronics. Now that we understand the industrial impact, let's unpack the geopolitical reasoning. The Netherlands' sudden takeover of Nexperia wasn't just a corporate matter. It was a political statement, likely aligned with U.S. pressure to curb China's semiconductor development. From the Dutch perspective, it was about national security, protecting intellectual property, and signaling toughness. From China's perspective, it was a direct threat to its industrial supply chain. Nexperia's Chinese facilities were producing critical chips and supplying global automakers. Losing control over that supply even if only legally, could set a dangerous precedent. By retaliating, China demonstrated that ownership on paper doesn't guarantee operational control. This also exposed an asymmetric vulnerability. The Netherlands can claim legal ownership and enforce court rulings, but it lacks the production base and rare earth supply to actually run or deliver Nexperia's products. Meanwhile, Europe's automotive industry, heavily dependent on these chips, faces the risk of severe shortages. Tensions escalated further. The German, French, and Italian governments warned that if the Dutch government couldn't restore chip supplies, they would invoke the crisis exemption under Article 17 of the EU Chips Act, effectively bypassing Dutch control of Nexperia's European facilities. This shows that while the Dutch move may have seemed strategic, it came with high economic and political costs. In short, China's actions were carefully calibrated, target the real choke points, protect industrial interests, and force Europe to confront the reality that legal ownership does not equal manufacturing power. So, what happens now? China's countermeasures have set the stage for three possible scenarios, each with serious consequences for the global tech and automotive industries. Scenario 1. Rapid de-escalation. The Netherlands and China negotiate, export licenses resume, and chip supply stabilizes. Factories recover, layoffs are reversed, and production delays are minimized. This is the best-case outcome, but it requires both sides to compromise quickly. Scenario 2. Prolonged stalemate. Export approvals remain slow or blocked, ASML's production drops, and automotive assembly lines in Europe, North America, and Brazil continue to halt. Orders are delayed, revenue is lost, and supply chains scramble to adapt. The longer the stalemate, the more permanent the disruption becomes. Scenario 3. Accelerated decoupling. Europe and other countries invest heavily in alternative rare earth refining and chip production, but at a much higher cost. Supply chains are rewired over years, not months, with increased production costs and slower innovation. China maintains a dominant position in the high-end market, while global competitors struggle to catch up. The key takeaway is clear, a small material, rare earths, and a legal technicality can ripple through global industries worth billions. The Netherlands' attempt to assert control over Nexperia revealed a critical truth. Industrial power and legal ownership are not the same thing. 
For viewers, the lesson is simple. Watch the supply chains, track production delays, and understand that global technology relies on just a few choke points. This story isn't just about chips or cars. It's about how fragile the modern high-tech world really is. And that's why this isn't just a Dutch or Chinese issue. It's a wake-up call for the entire global tech ecosystem.